Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Signature Global Network channel. And as you know, Signature Global Network, it's a global network that combines lots of visionaries and pioneers from the logistics industry. Today, we are honored to have a guest who's with me and his name is Mike Mikoik. It's Vice President of SPI. What's up? logistics and Mike is a very personal and enthusiastic person who is a collaborator and thinks out of the box all the time and Mike has a unique background in all sides of the transportation industry from trucking to the international free forwarding and special projects as well so with over I believe almost 30 years experience he credits his school of hard knock for his success and you will find Mike easily engaging in conversation and his willingness to help and draw out of the best of people and his positiveness is contagious and willingness to support his team grow personally and professionally so ladies and gentlemen mike lives in and resides in vancouver canada where he has lived all his life and a little bit about spi logistics it is celebrating its 45th anniversary and it has 64 us offices and 20 offices in canada Wow, I'm so honored to welcome Mike with us. So enjoy the interview. It's so hard to grab Mike and it's so great that you can catch this interview. So enjoy. Hi, Mike. Hey, Christy, how are you? Long time no see. Good. Yes, long time. It's been a month. It's too long. It hasn't been a month. It's only been like two and a half weeks. Oh, that's right. I feel like a year. Yeah, but it feels like a month, right? <laughs> no, it feels like more than a month. It's definitely longer than that. But it's I good know. to see you, Mike. Thank good you so you much for your time. No problem. I want Thank to give you. back. I want to be able to help uh, drive more people and more companies your way here. I think that what you got going on is pretty solid. And I think it's a, there's just a lot of potential out of it. And you've attracted good people to it, to your network. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. I really appreciate it. So let just um, for the benefit to the audience who are listening, and we just want to introduce you, Mike, and some of them might already have seen your face on SGN channel because of the interview we had in the conference. But I want to officially introduce him again. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Mike. Mike, would you please just share a bit about your journey and who you are and your experience about you know what you do and so on thank you mike no problem well it's funny because i think this wasn't an industry in transportation that i actively pursued you just kind of fell into it and when you start talking to a lot of other people in our transportation space a lot of other people just fell into it too but anyways i've honestly been in this since the time i basically finished school and i started my career off working for the airlines and cargo load planning and weight and balance. And from there, it just kind of took its way in through international freight forwarding, focusing on air and ocean. And then I had a strong niche that I was focusing on, which was the Asia Pacific trade lane into North America. I did that for a number of years and kind of where I really established the aspect that, you know, in order to grow business and to, you know, promote more business, it's got to be a win-win for everybody. So your relationships with your customers are important, but your relationship with your overseas partner or your overseas, overseas agent mm -hmm. is just important because they maintain their relationship relationship with the shipper. So I learned a lot about that, traveled a fair amount through Asia and building those types of relationships. And it was funny because I was in international freight forwarding for many years. And from that, I kind of took a, a step into the domestic side, focusing on trucking within Canada, the US and parts of Mexico. And it was funny, it was a whole, it was a game changing experience because pretty much every single customer or shipper that you actually meet in the US and Canada has some sort of a transportation need when it comes to trucking, whether it's less than truck load or, you know, short haul trucking, long haul reefer. There was so many opportunities with that. And it was so fast paced instead of have opening up a bill of lading, waiting for it to start and you know, Shanghai and come to North America and your 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 cargo would be open for 14 days. Here in the trucking industry, you know, your average of keeping open a, a shipment tender is, you know, four to five days. Things just move really quickly. I got into that, built up a whole with SPI, built up a big network of, of agents and customers on that side. And from there it was like, wow, you know what? All these customers that were doing 
transportation for in the USA and Canada, they also have international transportation opportunities that that are available that we've never touched. And that's kind of the next journey that we're looking at here is trying to find deep selling opportunities with our existing customers. And Air and Ocean International seems to be the uh, the fit right now that we're looking at. I love that, Mike. Guys, Mike has been in the industry for, I think, 40 years. You don't look like... No, 40 years. That's not too long. <laughs> only 48. I've been in the industry now, I don't know what, 30 years. Let's go with 30 years. How's that sound? No, but, uh, you know, it's really amazing that we have people like you, Mike, because you, especially you've been in the industry for so long, but you're still so passionate and you show love to, to the industry you show love to people it's something definitely everybody would love to look up to and that's why ladies and gentlemen why i want to invite mike to this podcast is because he has so much gold you know so much things and knowledge that he can share with us and for those who are not familiar we're going to definitely share more about mike just pay attention to our you know our social media posters and mike is one of our members in this network and we always are very proud to have people like him in this network so thank you again mike now the next question i have for you is you know let's because you just mentioned about you expand to their international you know freight and air and ocean so what factors do you believe are driving the need for brokerage firms like you know customer brokers to expand into international air and ocean freight you just mentioned that through your journey you realize it's really a lot of needs there. So yeah, any factors you want to share with us? Absolutely. I mean, I think it boils down to the customers. Our customers are demanding, not demanding, they're expecting to build a further relationship with the people that they like and they trust. And I mean, I think in the case of SPI, you know, we have a lot of customers that value the service that we provide for them in Canada, the US, but they're also looking for other ways where we can help them out internationally. It's so funny. We sometimes we overcomplicate this business. They go, we have to have this secret sauce in order to to attract new customers. But at the end of the day, it's so simple. It boils down to relationships. People are going to work with people that they like and yes. people that they trust. So when you have those existing relationships with customers where they like you, they trust you, you've proven yourself to them. The aspect of expanding or deep selling that relationship or them asking you, can you handle our international air and ocean seems like a natural fit because you've already proven yourselves on the domestic side. And I think that's the real driving factor for us in expanding into the international air and ocean is the fact that our customers are asking us to do it because they like what we're providing for them here in North America. Very nice. Thank you, Mike. I can't agree anymore. It's definitely a main thing for, I mean, the source, I would say the salt to any dishes. So it's about relationship. I agree with you, Mike. Thank you so much. So from the other, you know, from your perspective, what are the key challenges, opportunities for, you know, brokerage firms looking for to expand to to the international markets because I'm pretty sure who are listening, some of them are probably similar, like they've been doing their custom broker for a while and they're still hesitating, they worry, there's a lot of fear or doubt attacking them. So what's your your opinion and your suggestion or advice to these people? Thank you, Mike. Absolutely. I think we know I mean even for us you've been expanding into until we started understanding that there are, you know, freight forwarding networks to join was the big thing about who do you trust overseas like how do you deal with a, with another eight or a freight forwarder who's located in india or in china like how do you know that that a you can trust them that they're going to take your business seriously how they're going to build relationships with the supplier how are you actually even going to get paid like how do you trust that you could actually get paid i think those were some of the fears that we really had and probably some of the the factors that held us back from expanding into it is that we didn't have overseas partners that we knew that we trusted and that we could work with and i think that was probably the biggest sign and i think a lot of other people have that hesitation too the fact that you could deal with, uh, you know, you can start giving business to an overseas agent and, you know, there's a substantial amount of money that's being transacted between both parties and one of them decides not to pay. Well, that could have a huge impact on the business. Your opinion and your suggestion or advice to these people. I agree with you, Mike. So with that saying, we're talking about the challenging, what is your personal suggestion and advice for people who are worried and what would be your solution to them? One of the things we did, and we didn't even really know that anything like this really existed it was when we started looking at 
the international freight forwarding networks where you're actually dealing with people or agents, companies that are in the same position as you are, have those same fears. But you know what, by joining a network where you have some financial protection on the aspect of your receivables, but also having the opportunity where these meetings are facilitated, where you can actually meet people face to face and share with them your business goals, your areas of challenges, markets you want to develop and try to find those synergies. And by meeting people face to face, I think it's for one thing, it just it brings down the whole fear factor of, you know what, when you meet people face to face, you you can see if you like them, you can see if you trust them, you build these relationships. And from there, it can take off. But I think the biggest thing is just belonging to a network and actually going to these meetings and making or the meeting times with certain overseas partners and just laying it out on the line as to, you know what, here's what I'm doing. Here's where I need help with. Can we work together? Yeah. And and finding something that's going to be not just a win for one for one side, but it's got to be a mutual win for both sides. And I think that's key. Wow. You said the next question that I wanted to ask you, Mike. You can read my mind. So I was trying to ask you about, you mentioned, uh, you know, the relationships of the free borders that they need to, it's really crucial with the relationships. And that's why the face-to-face -face meetings with overseas partners can enhance collaboration and trust in, in their logistics business. So maybe because you already stole my question. Mike. But I have some more to share with that though. <laughs> okay, keep going. Thank you. Actually, I'll share this story with you. So when I, back in the day when I worked for uh, Kununago, which who is a global freight forwarder, they have their own offices worldwide. And even that at times was a challenge too, because each of those branches was made to run as their own profit center. So it was still, even though they're under the same umbrella, the same company name, you still had to build relationships with these overseas offices. They had to understand what your business needs were. They had to understand what their business or share what their business needs were. And you had to have a working partnership. But the same thing can be achieved when you belong to a network like Signature Global Network. Like there's other ones as well too, but that's the same thing. When you meet people face-to-face, -face, you build that relationship. You continually go to these meetings that are facilitated because the more time you spend with people, the more trust that's going to happen, the more comfortable you're going to feel. And you know what? Like I said, you're finding ways to make sure everybody's happy and everybody's winning and that builds for a successful partnership. Thank you, Mike. And it reminded about myself is that I've been also working for a big organization like D.B. Schenker, similar to Quinn Go, they're top guys um giants but in the meantime i think definitely when we met each other when we connect with people deeper it makes huge difference about the cooperation and collaboration as well so thank you i i really love your um, story and that really helps me and helps all the audience to understand how crucial to have these one-on-one -on -one meetings. All right, so the next one, it's about markets, right? So, you know, the market, especially logistics industry and free forwarding as well, it's like a roller coaster. Some days it's so crazy, like, you know, expensive. Some days they're so low, the rate, and there's no cargo, or sometimes there's too many cargo, no space and things like that. So right now, what are there some notable trends or shifts you've observed in this industry, international and ocean, this industry that you've been observing? You, you hit it on the head. It's a roller coaster. It's never the same <laughs> thing every single day. It's constantly changing and you have to be adaptable to it. And you have to, I think the big thing is, here's one thing I've really learned in this industry, whether it's air ocean or even in trucking in the USA and Canada, is that our customers look to us to advise them as to what's going out on the market. We're viewed on their side from them as the experts in our particular space. And it's up to us in order to really, you know, further those relationships and to build trust is to educate them as to what's going on on the market. And I think that's one way in our marketing side, what we've used with our customers is we've used podcasts, we've used videos, short clips, we've used, we've used all kinds of different channels for marketing to help educate our customers so that they can make the best informed decisions when they're choosing their different modes of transportation that are available out to them. And like I said, they're always asking us, well, what's the market trend going to be in the next few months? Well, you know what, you can take a look at past data and just, you know, from <laughs> Communicating with I agree with you, Mike. Kind of give them, you, can, you can give them a sense of to what's going on, but that's really what our customers are looking at us for, is to share what's going on in the market and educating them so they can plan and execute their supply chain accordingly. So true, so true. History repeats. When I was also doing the product role to show their trend and market updates to the clients, I found that it's always repeat. Like when you look back at the what's SHFI, you know, Shanghai rate in indicator. Yeah. So we see the rates last year and the two years ago, three years ago, they're always like up and down, up and down. It's just like our life, you know. If if it's flat, that means we're dead. 
but if it's up and down, that means we're still alive. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Well, it changes. It, it, it changes. World dynamics now are, are constantly shifting. And you know what? You can't accurately forecast how things are going to be in six months mm -hmm. because you know what? One thing can happen in the world and a lot of things can be impacted by that. And unfortunately, you know what? Transportation is one of those things that's affected by volatility in the market and volatility in the world. Very true. And you're right, Mike. The key is to keep the clients updated and keep them learning about what it is and give them the experience and knowledge so they will be more sensitive. They will understand what's going on and they understand you more as well. Communication is the key. So thank you, Mike. Yeah. One other thing too, like, I mean, we used to do a lot of white papers with what's going on in the market or just, you know, market studies as to what other companies are doing. And that was good for a period of time, but a lot of those white papers get long and drawn out. So not everybody has time to read them. But one thing we started using is we've been using videos, but we've also been use, utilizing AI characters to share information about market trends. Yeah. And we've been finding that our engagement rate from our customers when they click the video, just because it's something different or more engaged and you're still getting your message across. So there are so many tools right now that we can use for marketing. And you know what? It may not be the traditional ways that we were used to in the past, but you know what? Sometimes you got to be those innovators and try something different. And a lot of times when you try something different, you'll get those the people to click on it and to open it up and it works. Very good. Thank you, Mike. Of course, the innovators are always the winners because if you don't try, you never know. And I really agree with that, Mike. So thank you. So the next question is, are there specific regions or markets that you see as particularly promising for growth in the international freight forwarding sector? So anything in your mind? Well, I think, I mean, in our case, because this is something now we're just newly starting to get ourselves involved in on the international side. I think, I mean, anything coming out of, you know, mainland China, Southeast Asia seems to be the hotspot for us that's coming into North America. U.S. and Canada is a heavily import dominated market mm -hmm. from those particular areas. So I see those as one of the major growth factors or growth areas that we're going to be, be looking at and developing to. And like I said, you know what, having building the relationships with the right people and them. And it's interesting, even just coming to these conferences and coming to your conference already, you're starting to get market feedback from a lot of the offices we've kind of decided we want to partner up with. And their information that they're sharing with us, we're able to pass on to our customers too. So that's one of the areas we're really looking to develop. Yeah, that's awesome. You're right, Mike. I think right now, especially for in this commercial world, there are many informations outside there, but most of the information probably are for the beneficial, for the publisher who wants to, you know, do ads or to tell people, you know, how good they are and things like that. But these things that you can't get, it's the things when you connect with the true, the real people who are in, let's say, in Philippines or China or where you are not in there and they can see all the information or their updates and when you got the first-hand information that's where you bring extra value to your clients so i think you're right mike it's it's amazing that we have that and it's helping the whole industry growing and help the customers to understand what's really going on as well i mean i find even when you have information or you know knowledge of something that perhaps your customers don't know Man, that is like the perfect reason to give your customer a call instead of, you know, doing the, hey, I'm just checking in to see if you have any more. <laughs> that doesn't work. I hate, I hate hearing that word. I'm just checking <laughs> in. And trust me, I used to do it as well. But Everybody does the work. Right. I know. It's, and it's probably customers be like, okay, I want to hang up now. <laughs> But if you call your customer and go, listen, I want to share with you some, some things that are happening overseas, which I believe is going to have an impact once things hit in the USA or Canada, I just want to prepare you just so you have an understanding so you can plan accordingly. Well, guess what? The customer is going to want to hear it instead of, hey, I'm just checking in. Do you have a load for me to move? You got to come with some sort of value. And they expect that from you too. Wow. I love that, Mike. I love your authenticity. And it's so true what you said. And sometimes, especially in this challenging world, for those people who are really desperate to get business and to get bookings or whatever. So, hey, I'm just checking. I can't imagine that. That is too funny. Thank you, Mike. I read something and this was from a, actually a business owner. He was out of Texas, but he he built up a quite a big supply chain uh, transportation company. And they that was one of the things he goes, what were the key factors for being successful? And he says, A, be honest, be honest in all things. We want to be known for your honesty. 
And the second thing is become the master of your industry. Know everything about it. Take in as much knowledge as you can because knowledge is power. Wow. So powerful. Thank you, Mike. It powerful. No, it, it's really powerful. I love the, the sharings. And you're right. If you're not bringing value to people, it's all about value exchange. It's not even though money's there, but money's just a tool for the exchanging value. Yeah. So amazing. I'm really excited for this whole interview. I got a lot of questions still, Mike. Um, oh, okay. Thank you for, for bearing with me. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we don't usually get Mike so it's going to be an amazing session today. So next question for you is looking back on your career, what are some key lessons you've learned about building a successful you know, business, especially for the, this industry? Any operation-wise or anything about you getting business? You, you mentioned about relationships. That's really important. What are the things you can share, especially for those who are looking up to you, Mike? Because you know you've been running this company for so long and it's so successful. You Maybe quickly mention again how many offices you have and where you are a little bit yeah. to the okay. audience who haven't heard yet. Yeah. Yeah, we've got 64 offices in the USA and Canada. We have just over 20 in Canada and the rest of them are in the US. I mean, our corporate headquarters is out in beautiful Vancouver, Canada. And I think you can see today the sun starting to come out. It's blue sky. We don't always have rain. But our corporate headquarters is in Vancouver. The majority of our business is within the US, which makes a lot of sense to given the size of the US. Yeah, we've been around for, we're actually going to have our 45th anniversary as a company on May the 4th, which is huge. That's a huge milestone for us. Wow. And so yeah, we started in humble beginnings and slowly over time, just, you know, built up our built up the business. But I mean, it boils down to bringing on the right people. And this is a people business. So you got to make sure you bring on the right people. And I think where you're going with your question there, like, you know, what are some of the lessons I've learned over the course of my 30 years, not 40 years? Sessional, Mike. I'm taking my nose too. <laughs> oh, really? You know, the big thing for me, and, and and not everybody has to follow the way I did it. I took no post-secondary school. In fact, if anything, I barely finished school. Like I was, I never applied myself in school. But the one thing I was always had was an interest in people and, and people's success. So, you know what? I found the biggest thing is to surround yourself with people that are successful and be a sponge. Ask them questions. Like questions like, you know, what were some of the mistakes you made? What'd you learn from them? Well, guess what? If you can learn from somebody else, uh, from a successful person's mistakes, well, guess what? You're not going to do those when you growing in your business. So I find the biggest thing is be a sponge. Take in as much information as you can from people. Be a really good listener. Ask really good questions and listen. Wow. And you know what the cool thing is? I find people that are that have had experience in this industry and who've been in a long time, the one thing they want to get back is their knowledge and their experience. So there's not like you have to find someone to mentor you. Any successful person, if you are truly sincere about learning and understanding and being a better person, will be happy to mentor you. So I think I've had, I've been surrounded by really good mentors. And a lot of my mentors have helped educate me, helped steer me in the right direction when I've, you know, thought of, an, thought of something that may work. And they're like, well, you know, Mike, that may not work. But maybe if you look at it this way, I find that's where I attribute the majority of my success is being coachable. So meaning you have to be humble enough to realize that you don't know everything. So be coachable, be a really good listener and ask really, really good questions. Wow. You do that. I think you can actually be quite successful, quite successful in life. Wow. And the other thing too, here's somebody who's now been in business in this industry now for 30 years and actually still likes it and finds passion about it is you got to have passion for what you're doing. So you know what, as much as transportation can have its moments, you still got to be excited and passionate about it. Because if you're not passionate about what you do, guess what? Your customers are going to see that you're not passionate about it and they're not going to want to deal with you. Your customers want to deal with people that are winners and who like what they're doing. There's my four things. Wow. So good. Run and pause. <laughs> I love the sharing. I think you're right. The, the sponge is something I'm doing as well. I'm just checking myself what, you know, I think for the good listener, I always know great leader lessons quickly that's something i'm still learning sometimes i talk too much i know that <laughs> but it's not really i mean depends and the other thing is good questions ask good questions is really really important you're right because there are so many people around us who know so many things but if you don't ask the right question you don't get what you need to know so that's yeah. really powerful the, this one <laughs> the quote on questions is huge because i was i learned what i learned from asking questions that actually have applied even when you're talking to customers because the way you word a question can the result of it could be like a one word answer or it could be an explanation so mm -hmm. you know when you start your questions with how or why or mm -hmm. those things 
tell the customer that, hey, listen, you got to put you you got to answer this with some substance instead of something that's really simple. And I find that's good. And same thing when you're talking to people who have been in this business or are successful, ask them questions that have something that's going to drive that they have to give you a big explanation. Yeah. And listen, don't interrupt them. People, this is the other thing I learned. People always want to talk about themselves. So they're always happy to talk about themselves and the success they do. So if you ask the right questions and listen, people will share with you. You're going to learn more from other people than you're going to learn from just talking to yourself. I love that. Thank you so much, Mike. It's been really precious session today. I really like all the sharings and it's a life lesson, guys. It's not just about the, this industry. It's not just about something specific is about the whole life. How can you be successful? So I really appreciate that, Mike. Thank you. So the next question I have here is, can you share a memorable experience or challenge you faced while expanding into international freight forwarding, whatever, or when you start to grow more? Like let's say you start from small and then you know things just keep going up more and more and you're really happy to keep growing. But everybody has faced that moment. So, oh, it's like a bottleneck or you're going nowhere. Do you have that moment? Yeah. Do you remember? Oh, you know, I have something that happened probably within the last four years. It wasn't so much related to the transportation side, but it was definitely related or, or on the international side, but it was definitely related to dealing with a customer. Yeah. We had one office that, and we had an issue with that office who was taking advantage of rates with a customer and the customer found out about it and basically cut them off altogether. And there was some shady stuff that was going on with that person that was working in that office, which we had to terminate. And we ended up losing the customer over it. And that was sad. But one thing, you know what, we talked about, it's like, you know what, like that one person doesn't define our whole company as to who we are as a company. So we decided like, you know what, let's go visit the customer. And you know what, we may have got, a, we, may, we had a lot of egg in our face in that particular time, but you know what, you know what, I would rather go to the customer and explain to them what had happened, what we did to rectify it and extend that olive branch to, you know, what, perhaps still keep that opportunity still open. Anyways, we did it. We went over, we visited the customer. They weren't happy with us. There was no way that they were going to do business with us again. That's what they said at the beginning. But the fact that we owned up to the mistake that that employee that wasn't the wrong employee mm -hmm. and taking the time to fly out there and meet them, they actually saw that that's not who we are as a company. And from that, and extending that olive branch out, we were actually able to build business with that particular yeah. company. And we were moving some crazy product. We were moving like Apple iPhones with this company. So it was like substantial business. But anyways, the point out of that is, if you make a mistake or your company has failed in some way, don't hide that, yeah, you know what, I failed, they'll never deal with me. Take yeah. it upon yourself, call the customer, try to visit them, explain to them what had happened and take ownership of a problem. It'll go well with you. So powerful story, Mike. And you're right. Nowadays, sometimes the ego is troubling us. So we're like, oh, it's so bad if I have to face that situation. Like we have to say sorry or we apologize. But at the end of the day, it's not about any specific individual. It's about that, you're right, taking responsibility. Take, you know, just be willing to say sorry, to tell them, explain communication. And that's definitely making huge difference. And I guess... Through that story, I'm pretty sure the customer has even better relationship with you than ever. It's like, Absolutely. yeah, it's like in our lives, we as partners or as friends or as colleagues and whatever relationships, if we are willing to say sorry, we're willing to confess. And in fact, the relationship will actually enhance It'll be enhanced. And that's not even a, not even applicable just to our industry. That's just applicable in life in general. If you make a mistake, own up to it. People will respect you more for it too. Wow. Thank you, Mike. Guys, now you can see why he's been so successful. And all the things he's sharing is automatically from him. And it's a reflection of his life and the way how he does business, how he treats people. It's truly amazing. Thank you, Mike. So the other thing I have here is, you know, where you see the future of international like freight forwarding or logistics industry heading, particularly in the terms of technology, regulations, or industry dynamics. Anything you want to share? Thank you. Well, as a company for us, we've invested heavily, probably more applicable to the, the US and Canada trade lane, mm -hmm. but we've invested heavily into technology. And the, and part of the reason is our customers expect it from us. First of all, on the, on the on the trucking side and the carrier side within the USA and Canada, there's a major issues with fraud taking place right now. 
with uh, double brokering. So, I mean, you know, you think you're giving it to a specific carrier and then the end, he's taking that cargo and brokering it out to somebody else. But see, when we onboard a carrier into our system, we take a look at their insurance. We take a look at their past uh, safety ratings. We take a look at a whole bunch of different things. So all of that is automated and, and technology is what's providing it. That's what technology is providing to us. But the thing is, is when we have a certain carrier that's on board in our system as an acceptable carrier to use, and we book a load with them, and they take that load and give it to somebody else, all of a sudden you're lost. You don't know what type of insurance they have. You don't know what type of carrier coverage they have. You have no idea about their their safety ratings or anything like that. So you become vulnerable. So we've invested heavily in technology to ensure that we're weeding out double brokering and reutilizing carriers that, you know, meet up to that qualification point where they can be utilized in our system. So invested heavily into auto bid, auto bidding too. So a lot of our customers, the larger ones, they're not handing, they're not just emailing you out for, you know, for rates, but everything's automated through a bid board system. So we have a lot of tools that we utilize to, to bid automatically on a lot of these loads with the carriers that we have in the system and the rates we have in the system. So yeah, I think in our side of the things, technology is huge. And I believe that we're on the cutting edge when it comes to technology in the USA and Canadian market. And you know what, as we start, like I said, as we start building out our international side of our business, there's going to be tools and technology that we're going to need to implement into our system. And we won't be scared or, or holding back on that. We will be investing just as much as we possibly need to to ensure that our customers are getting transparency and we're safeguarding ourselves. So we're not going to get burned by insurance claims or fraud or whatever other you know things that are taking place. But in North America, we have a real problem right now with, with fraud, stolen loads, and they're getting, they're utilizing different tactics all the time. So those are the things that we're really utilizing with technology to help we know. Wow. So Mike, thank you. Because as SGNs and network, we also embrace a lot of technology and AI softwares and so on. And we found it's quite challenging for the logistics people in general. I'm not saying yourself which is good. I know that you're very open to this technology, but there's still many people who are living in the dinosaur age that they're not really open to accept this or that they have a lot of cons you know, concern or they, they prefer the old ways to do business. They think that's good enough. So did you ever face that challenge? And how can you, you know, if you talk to this guy, how, what do you want to say to them? Because, you know, sometimes they, you understand why they are, hesitating and whatever so if whoever is right now watching they are also kind of like in between and not really decided you know go or not to go and it's too costly or it's too dangerous or risky whatever they are thinking so what's your advice and what what you want to say to them well i mean i think in our in the usa and canada market those who haven't embraced technology and especially in the aspect of safeguard their own business have faced challenges and there's companies that have gone out of business because you know what you get stuck with a fraudulent load or your load gets stolen and that's coming back on you and all of a sudden your insurance is cutting you off it can sink a company pretty quick mm -hmm. so you know what yeah i think you're going to see companies that are going to struggle moving forward if they're not embracing technology and some of the tools that are out there and you know what i think it'll even limit you onto the type of customers that you're going to be able to go after if you're planning to go after some larger larger companies i mean you need to have technology in place in order to satisfy their business it's not an edi connection the api connections like you need your system to communicate with their system and a lot more of that is is going to start taking place and if you're not on board with it it's going to give you challenges with trying to help and and grow and scale your business thank you mike so whoever is listening i agree with mike as well and it's about i, I don't know if you remember nokia store i shared on the conference as well right they they have brand craft because they're not embracing the innovation and things so i think it's important to always include innovation to your picture because every day the world is changing every day every moment so if we're not um we try to avoid things rather we we should embrace and find out what that can what does that mean to us and what can we do and things like that so I think, Mike, you are definitely a very wise person to run your business, which is why you're turning, not you are turning 45, but the company's 45 yeah. years old. Um, it's definitely show, showing that how many decisions that you made in your life and the business that helped to achieve what they have right now, what you have right now today. So congratulations, Mike. I think any, anyone who's a business owner, you know, whether you're on the freight forwarding side or even on the brokerage side as well, surround yourself with good people. You don't have to be the expert in everything, but if you surround yourself with people that are um, 
um, that understand technology, understand operational process, surround yourself with those people. It's only going to enhance your business. So we can't be good at everything. I mean, our, our company, we like our vice president of operations, she's extremely solid. She's process driven. She takes care of things on the back end to make our company run smoothly. Our finance person is, is extremely knowledgeable when it comes to finance and on top of customers. Our days to pay with our carriers is under 30 days, like which is, <laughs> is rare in our industry. We give options for quick pay with our customers. And then our IT person, who is a programmer too, he can do things. It's amazing. For somebody who didn't understand transportation when he came in here, the systems that he has built for our company when it comes to technology and ease of process and simplifying the work has been outstanding. So yeah, embrace technology. Absolutely. But surround yourself with people that understand it if you don't understand it. Wow. Another round of applause for that. So Mike, uh, one last thing, because you've been sharing about embracing technology, but also surround yourself with good people. So when it comes to select people, what are the main factors that you think, like especially for their business owners, they're struggling to find someone they can trust. And if they never started, if they never find someone, they will never get rid of the, they only stay where they are, they can never grow, right? So what are the advices that you have, key things that you want to share with them so it can help them to find the right people? Absolutely. I think one thing, I mean, if you're looking as a business owner, you need to surround yourself with people that and people that are almost smarter than you. Like you're not the smartest person in the room. You need to surround yourself with other smart people. And those are the ones that you can help to, to build you a good, solid business. But when it comes to bringing on people that are working, you know, in operations or working in, you know, accounts receivable, accounts payable or, in, you know, in IT department. You know, if this experience is important. Obviously, if someone has transportation experience, that's a that's a huge plus. But you know what? This business isn't complicated. Like when you really think of it, I learned it at 18 years of age and I wasn't a smart person. It's not complicated. But I think you look at people that have the soft skills, people that are coachable, passionate. You know what? When they learn something new and they're excited about it. You know, people that are good listeners. I mean, if you can build your team with those soft qualities or those um those soft skills, I think you can build a tremendous business because our business is not complicated. It's easily trainable. The problem is, is just finding the right people that like it, that are driven by it, that have like an entrepreneurial mind where they they see that they, hey, I want to do this and take it to this. Those are the people that you want. Very helpful. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. So definitely is a coachable, passionate and they have all the soft skills that, you know, you just mentioned, and they're willing to listen, of course, and they also have the hunger. They have, they're hungry to keep growing, keep learning, expanding skills. So though they don't stay where they are. They, when the company wants to move on, they move on together and they're willing to be around you, support you. I think the other thing comes to this is, Mike, it's also leadership skills. And you mentioned about the successful people who, you know, taught us the successful elements and the stories so i think you as a leader i can see a lot of amazing leadership skills in you so is, is there anything you are aware that makes a difference when you connect with your let's say your staff and people around you who are willing to work for you what are the the tricks or the key elements that you think you are you have that helps make a difference there's two things in business that i found there's the aspect of how much money you can make in in business so if you have a job hey what's my salary what am i going to make every month and then there's something else that i believe has got a uh, a monetary component to it and i call it the psychic income and what that is is the, the feel good you want to make sure that people feel that they're with a company that they feel used trusted valued so i mean i think what goes a long way when people do really good things is to praise them for it that to them when you tell them that that builds their psychic income up i think people no matter where they work they want to feel that they're a valuable part of the company valuable part of the organization so treating people with that dignity and respect and ensuring that yes obviously they're working in order for their livelihood but people People also want to be connected with a company that, you know what, they go home at the end of the day and they feel really good about themselves. They feel really good about the company they work for. They feel that they're valued. They feel that they're trusted. They feel there's opportunity to grow within the company. So, you know what, you, you got to pay them well, but you also got to, you got to feed that psychic income, that feel good, that feel good drug within their mind. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Mike. Really appreciate there's so much gold, as I said at the beginning. Obviously, we're not just dying, dig out the gold, we dig out the diamond as well. There's so many <laughs> and diamond rules that you just shared. And we did not rehearse with this, guys. It's really authentic. And I love that you just, you know, you're not hiding anything. You're sharing all your 
true feelings, your true lessons, and that truly can help people who are listening to this podcast. And I really appreciate Mike. You are amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mike. Oh, thanks for having me on. Awesome. So while we finish this podcast, Mike, I think you shared about your testimonial in this net network conference we just had in Cebu, Philippines. And is there anything you want to share with people who like who are not part of SGN that is there anything you want to share with the audience? Just to let them know what SGN is and what you you see us as, that would be really helpful. Well, what attracted me to the SGN network is it's a new network. So really, we're on like the founding members of this of this <laughs> network. So you know what? We could really put, like, I mean, obviously, you're putting your stamp on the culture within the network. But I think a lot of the key members that you have within this network are putting the stamp on what this agency or what this network is going to look like moving forward and growing. And I think that's really attractive too. And there's, you know what, I liked how you really, you weed out, like you really qualify those who come into the network. Because you know what, some companies will just take on whoever, but you qualify them. You want to make sure that they're going to be a fit and they're going to work well within the network. Because you have one bad egg within the network, they can make a lot of problems for the entire network, right? And sometimes there's eggs that, you know, you you may come across to be like, hey, you know what, they're not the right fit. Well, you may have to cut them loose to preserve what you have, what you've built and what your vision is. And I think that's you, Christy. I, I think you've got a lot of passion for it. You care. You're looking to connect people to ensure that there's a win-win for everybody. And your back office team is really smart as well, too. I like your back office team. Julianne, she's amazing. Like that, she's on top of everything. Like she doesn't let nothing slips past her. So you built a good team too. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. So I wish I can get you again, Mike, to another time. Thank you so much for your time today. And yeah, ladies and gentlemen, let's give another round of applause to him. Our team, Attitude team, will give this round of applause right now. So thank you, Mike. Thank you.